So I'd like to kind of focus on a couple of the hallmarks of aging that I thought were kind of interesting. I mean, you went through all of them in the book, which is, uh, we don't have time to kind of like look at them all. But um, so the first one was the nutrient sensing and the way uh, LPS seems to affect the insulin and maybe cause type two diabetes. Because to me, it's like type two diabetes is because you're eating too much sugar or you have too much weight, but this would be a like a totally different route by which, um, Type 2 diabetes could happen. Would that be kind of correct? And how so I, I wouldn't say it. Yeah, I wouldn't say a totally different path. I, I'd say it's probably contributing. Um, mm. So so just just to take it back a step. So yeah. when you consider that, uh, you know, whether it's a low fiber diet or aging, you've got alterations in the gut microbiome composition in a negative way. Then uh, uh, because of the, you, the low fiber diet and aging, you've got the decrease in gut barrier function. And then you've got an increased translocation of these bacterial metabolites or other metabolite products, microbial metabolite products in the blood. Um, uh, so then that, that can activate inflammation. Inflammation is one of the hallmarks of aging. So that's, so, so I've got that information in the book, but then, as you mentioned, you've got things like LPS that actually, uh, um, uh, can cause insulin resistance. If you inject LPS, you get basically a decrease in insulin sensitivity directly. So again, uh, whether that's, you know, I'm not saying, and actually, uh, you know, I had a, uh, it was an interesting uh, Twitter conversation between Lane Norton, who, uh, and one of, one, uh, you know, my other friends, Cosmo, um, basically, you know, he was saying that microbes can trigger insulin resistance and then tag me. And then I basically cited a whole bunch of data showing that LPS can cause in insulin resistance and is associated with insulin resistance in, as I think I, I showed in the book, uh, uh, in middle-aged middle -aged, uh, subjects. Now he was he was suggesting he he thought that I was saying that LPS is the cause of insulin resistance that we see uh, whether it's aging or just in general and I'm not at all saying that for sure it's going to contribute that's that's my take now is it 10 percent is it 20 percent is it 50 percent that's unknown but all right so now we've got LPS can cause and it's been shown to cause and this is human data uh, with direct injection if you inject LPS. There's a, a, a reduction in insulin sensitivity and increase in the HOMA index, which is a multiple, multiplicate, uh, the multiplication of glucose times insulin. Uh, so that's two hallmarks of aging. But then as you mentioned too, it's not just LPS. Uh, things like CMV too can activate mTOR. So when you think about mTOR increasing during aging, most people aren't thinking about microbes at all. And uh, there's also this data in the book too, that LPS has been shown to increase during aging. Now, granted, these are small studies large, you know, thousands of, of people studies haven't been conducted on LPS in old versus young. Um, all I can do is reasonably speculate based on the studies that exist. So um, LPS is up and older versus younger. And even if it's not LPS, um, aged animals have more of these microbial products in their blood than younger animals, which suggests a role for decreased gut barrier function. But uh, 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 just along those lines, in terms of the uh, mTOR story, most people aren't thinking about the role of microbes activating mTOR during aging. So, um, you know, it, I'd actually like to see a future where, you know, someone's got increased M mTOR activity, whether it's in their immune cells or somewhere else in their body. And instead of just giving them rapamycin, we identify what the microbial, we identify if it has a microbial trigger. And if it's the microbial trigger, we identify which microbe, maybe you've got fungi in your blood, or maybe you've got a virus in your blood. And these aren't far stretches. I mean, as I show evidence in the book, the incidence of bacterial, whether it's E. coli uh, or things like Staphylococcus aureus. So you've got gram negative and gram positive bacteria, two different types, uh, whether it's fungi, including candida, various candida species or viruses. These are found at an increased incidence uh, in some cases, 10 to 15 fold higher in older adults versus younger subjects in the blood. So um, the triggers that can negatively affect insulin, uh, insulin resistance or inflammation or mTOR activity are there, I'd argue are there, but it's just in most studies, most scientists aren't thinking about microbes at all. But once, 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 you know, however long this is going to take to have kind of a paradigm shift where, you know, researchers are thinking about, all right, why do we have increased inflammation in the blood? Do you have an increased microbial burden in your, in your blood? Is it an alteration of your blood microbiome, which is also a thing most people aren't thinking about. And I show that evidence in the book that there is indeed 
a blood microbiome that has also been shown to change during aging in terms of its composition and with disease. It, the composition changes during disease. Certain, certain bacteria phyla increase, like uh, proteobacteria, and certain decrease. So once we get more specific about the microbial component to uh, you know, aging and age-related diseases, in addition to our own human physiological changes during aging and age-related disease, and combine those two to have the whole story, I'd argue that now we're really going after mechanistic roots as opposed to only looking at one half of the story. This is kind of one, one argument, one, one issue that I have with you know, the NR, NMN story. And I made a video on it, you know, the CD38 story, which almost nobody was thinking about, um, well, except for the people who are interested in NR and NMN, but uh, along the CD38 story, and I have this information in the book too, LPS has been shown to increase CD38 expression. So if you're not going after a potential microbial uh, cause of the increase in CD38, are you really going to get the biggest bang for your buck with NR or NMN? So the thing is, almost nobody, nobody's thinking about that. Now, interestingly, there were two studies that were published in the last few weeks on the CD38 story and NR and NMN in Nature and I think Nature Medicine. And at least one of those studies was looking at the role of LPS on that, which basically confirms the LPS CD8, CD38 story. So in terms of those hallmarks of aging, whether it's nutrient sensing, uh, and I didn't even talk about mitochondrial dysfunction. I mean, uh, so, you know, uh, mitochondria are in our immune cells. Uh, one, one major reason for that is to produce the oxidative burst to produce reactive oxygen species to kill microbes that have been phagocytosed. So that's the easy answer for how microbes contribute to you know, a, a hallmark of aging, increased mitochondrial oxidative stress. Um, but then you know, there's other stuff in the book where I showed that um, you know, uh, my, uh, 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 mitochondria that are exposed to uh, herpes virus, HSV1, actually mitochondria then eject their DNA as, uh, which triggers uh, 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 the expression of uh, antiviral uh, in, uh, 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 genes. So genes that will boost antiviral defense. The problem is if you're injecting so much mitochondrial DNA, you're going to have decreased mitochondrial function, which is a hallmark of aging. So um, yeah, I, I put that information out there to basically show as many people as possible that are interested in these things that it isn't just dec decrements in human physiology that occur during aging. Some of what we see can be attributed to a micro microbial contribution. And I don't want to get, get it, you know, uh, get it twisted. And I don't want people to misinterpret it. I'm not saying microbes are causing everything in hu human aging. I'm just saying there is a contribution. There's enough evidence to show that there's a microbial contribution to all of the hall hallmarks of aging. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.